Hey, it's still bass season over here at New Perspectives Music World headquarters, and you'll remember the video I did before my... <laughs> my silly April Fool's video, I was working on a couple five-string basses. And while I was working on those, I also had a four-string bass, which is that one right over my shoulder that you can see there that I had started in that process. We'll be doing an update on the five-string basses pretty soon, but I wanted to finish this one up and talk about it. Um, really, I wanted to focus on the finish uh, because the finish is a little, a little different. I, I like the way I do it. And also, I wanted to talk about the larger series of instruments that it is a part of. Of course, like almost all the guitars I make nowadays, it starts over on my Avid CNC where I cut out the CNC files that I designed, um, you know, just out of some, this is some uh, butcher block tabletop that I have and the neck was made from some local maple, if I remember correctly. Um, so now once I have the parts cut out and I did rough sand them, it's time to do this finish technique. And it's a, a flame burst, but as you can see, I literally use flame instead of using uh, stains and in colors. So before I started the process, I sanded to about 320 grit, and then doing this does raise the grain, so you have to sand again. And it's really as simple as it looks. I just sort of burnt it into what looked like a flame pattern. Um, and that, of course, like I said, raises the grain, makes it a little bit of rough, and so I do need to go sand it again. So I sanded, I think, at uh, 320 grit again, as well as maybe 400 grit to get it a little bit smoother. And now you can see as it pushes all the sawdust around, it sort of loses that edge. Um, and then with a little bit of linseed oil, it sort of brings it back, brings it, some of the sharpness back, and it also, um, but then I lost some of the hard edges of the flame and the sanding process, so it looks like a flame burst, and the whole process took about 10 minutes, so it's a really easy, fun way to make a, a pretty unique looking finish. After letting the linseed oil soak in overnight, uh, I went and I applied some furniture butter. I don't always use this product, but sometimes I do. Um, and this is supposed, to, is supposed to sit for a little while to kind of cure in there, which I let it do. Um, and, you know, I'm just not a fan of big, fancy, glossy finishes. And I do like the look and feel of this and also the ease. And you can see I'm using a scotch Rite pad to kind of help rub that into the grains. So then after that has sat uh, for a while, I actually make my own polish that I do the final several coats on. And this is a couple different waxes and a couple different oils mixed together um, to just get it to a consistency I like and I, I put several coats on this you can see here I'm putting one more on after I'd strung it up kind of jumping ahead um, but I put you know three or four coats of this on and I recommend anybody that buys all my instruments to just buy any kind of off-the-shelf oil and wax base uh, finish to just keep your guitar looking the same way but let's do a quick commercial as most of you know by now, I very rarely take corporate money, and my videos are made possible thanks to the support of viewers like you who shop over at places like squaretools.com, my little tool company website. So today I want to talk about push sticks real quick. Um, this is something, I hate these plastic ones. They, I, they're, they're too thick. Uh, when they do hit the blade, which they always do, it's scary. Uh, they're just not useful. And then there's all sorts of like really fancy push sticks out there with like all these like things and contraptions. You don't need that. What you need is something that's safe to help you just push wood past your saw blade without putting your finger in the way. So. I made an oversized finger to do this. The finger swaver available at squaretools.com. It has a bunch of um, different notches in different locations and all these um, knuckles and stuff for pushing stuff through at different angles. It works upside down. It works very well and it's also very thin. It's only a quarter inch, so even very thin strips you can safely get through without hitting the blade. But if you do hit the blade, which you will, um, it's MDF so it just cuts away and you can see like this is one I've been using for years starting to get a little worn down um, but you know what you do when it starts to get a little worn down just take it over to your bandsaw and cut some new notches and this is one I've been using for even more years you can see it's got a lot of you know life still in it even though I've taken a lot of life out of it and I also put uh, these little uh, measurement markers in here just for a quick reference if you want to set your blade height to a specific height there's a ruler built in just another little feature of it that I hardly ever use but it's there and it's available over at squaretools.com here I'll hold up the good one all right enough pedaling back to the show so while I level and crown these frets, let me talk about the design a little bit. Uh, it goes back to 2020 when uh, I made a six string bass for a client and I made a video of it and someone commented that I should make a bass six. And I admit that I honestly didn't really know what that was and I had to look it up and I discovered it was basically a guitar down in the bass octave range and I loved it. I didn't realize that there was something different than a baritone in that family. And I got all into it. I made one for myself in this basic body style of this bass I'm making now. Um, and I. I like the body style. I was trying to do something that was kind of funky and modern, but then would also 
not necessarily scream the genre too much. And uh, uh, I named it George as in like King George the Sixth. And now that line is expanded to include Jet Screamer, which is a baritone guitar version of it. Um, that is a 27 and a half inch scale. And I named that after a Jetsons character. So then I made a guitar because there's also George Jetson. So it works. I made a guitar version that I called Judy and this one I'm calling Henry as in Henry Orbit from the Jetsons, or King Henry. It kind of fits that way, too, so I'm keeping both sort of naming themes. But now, check this out. I got my soldering iron from WEP Tools that I was just using, but they also gave me this really cool tool, and it's a different type of soldering iron. What it does is a little hair dryer, basically, that blows heat onto these little plastic uh, connectors that have solder in the middle. Here you can see it a little bit better. Um, so you just sort of sort of put the two wires together in these tubes and make them in a bunch of different sizes and scales and you can melt the plastic and the solder all in one swoop and make a solid connection pretty quick and easily. You just have to watch not to burn your fingers because it gets hot you're holding it close. And uh, I really enjoy using this tool and it makes wiring an instrument like this really easy because I can wire the pick guard separately and then just connect the final wires in to make it all one whole instrument. Um, so now that I've got the electronics in and the, the body's done, it's time to, you know, string her up, carve out a nut, and actually play and hear this instrument for the first time, which I am always excited to do. And, uh, let's check it out. One, two, As I say all the time when I talk about this series, what I like about it is how they all look obviously related, but they all have their own little differences to them. You can see like the, the guitars have, uh, and the baritone has that sort of bottom horn comes up a little bit more. And there's just some like subtle variations in the shapes like that uh, for each instrument. So they're all related, but they're not the same. And um, you know, I'm uh, continuing to develop it. Like I'm pretty happy with the way the bass came out. I think if I were to make them again, there's a couple minor changes I might do maybe to the pickup layout. Uh, maybe it even had a third pickup because I'm kind of just being over the top with that one. But uh, I think it plays great. I really like the next shape on it. Um, I like the way it feels. I like the, the weight of it. And uh, I'm pretty happy to add it to the family. So a couple of these are already listed for sale over at newperspectivesmusic.com. The bass is not yet, because, which is typical when I build them. I like to let them sit for a few weeks and make sure nothing weird happens before I put them for sale. But it will be, and you can contact me if you're interested in it. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it for this one. Stay tuned for bass season as it continues uh, with the five string basses. And also, I've got a whole bunch of appear on basses. I'll be making some more updates about, uh, which I'm pretty excited about. They're all all over the place right now. A whole bunch of them. It's base season. All right, be good.